welcome to the Gen X Vault. I am Chris Mitchell. Rob Kennedy. And we've been friends for a long time now, right, Rob? I think we determined 18 years. 18 years? Yep, 2002. That's, so that's older than a lot of... Uh, I, 18 and a half, because I think we met early, like January, February of 2002. Early in 2002? Yep. Okay, that's right, that's right. That's, that's exactly what we figured out. So Rob and I have been friends for now for about 18 years, almost 18 and a half. And uh, we are definitely of the Gen X crowd, the Gen X uh, generation. And, uh, you know, we, as I like to call it, we are the, I said, toy to tune generation. <laughs> yep. There was, our generation was really defined by not only when we come, came home after school, we were the latchkey kids. We came home, there was a cartoon waiting on it and a toy to sell it in between Yep. in the commercial. Well, the cartoon was the commercial for the toy. That's right. The cartoon yep. in, in Hasbro's case, yep. uh, the cartoon, not only did they make the commercials, they made the, uh, the, uh, the TV show and the... Mm-hmm. And the uh, cartoon to go along with it, and of course the the toys. But anyway, um, what we're going to do today is we actually have a special special uh, series for you guys today. Uh, Rob and I uh, we met because of our love of Star Wars, and we're we're huge Star Wars fans, and we're also huge toy collectors. Yep. I think that you are a bigger toy collector than I am. I, I've I've assessed in first, volume yeah. in volume, yes, when and we, diversity. And well, that's true. Yeah, that's true. I have more different things than you do. That, that's true. Well, yeah. you're big. Into, also, also, Rob, for the listeners out there, this is also going to be a podcast for those of you guys who may have not, uh, maybe you're not watching it, but you're listening to it. Uh, Rob is also a huge comic book fan. He's way bigger comic book fan than I am. So he's got a lot of. I think last time you told me you had around eleven thousand comic books. Uh, it's, it's right at thirteen thousand. Thirteen thousand. But I haven't collected in years. But but when it's, I stopped. It was right around. 13, okay, 000. but it's still a, a big. Big, big collection. Yep. Okay, that's a lot. That's more than some comic book stores, yep. for those of you who don't know. That's a lot. Yep. Um, and anyway, we've got a show sketch for you guys today. And uh, the first content that we're going to do, the first segment that we're going to do is... 10 totally sweet action figures in no particular order. 10 totally sweet action figures in no particular order. Now, I'm gonna. it's going to go like this. I'll pick one, Rob picks one, and we go back and forth till we've reach that point of uh, all 10. Yes. So, for my first action figure, okay. Chris's first pick. Okay. I have, aha, I have Darth Vader with a removable helmet. Now, I am a sucker. I am an absolute sucker for an action figure with a removable helmet. Uh, it's one of these things that, like, when uh, when I was a kid, I saw the, the ad for uh, Luke Skywalker with a removable mm-hmm. helmet, and I didn't know there was such a thing. <laughs> and so I am a sucker for his little pasty egg-shaped head under yep. there. And uh, which is this Power of the Force series, or is it? I mean, it's, is it after that? It's either Power of the, it's either late Power of the Force because he's not as steroided up as the early ones. Right. But yeah, so but, it could that could have been the because it changed. It was like then the Power of the Jedi, and then they had different little sub names to them. That's right. I think I think that one came later. Well, now, you several years later. It's funny that you say steroid up because David Prowse, who played Darth Vader, yeah. actually was a bodybuilder. Yep. And I don't know about the steroid use or anything like that, but I don't know if you know this or not, but did you ever see that David Waters, if you're out there watching, thank you for the uh, Darth Vader you gave me with David Prowse signature. That's actually in my... Uh, nope. in, did I ever say that? Mm-hmm. You don't have that? Nope. Yeah, I got that. I got that. So wait a minute. I have something that you don't have? Yeah. I got something wrong. Don't have... All right. David Prowse was actually very uh, jaded. I heard that. Toward I heard that. But yes. he passed, though. Yeah, he did. He passed, yeah. He was... Uh, and a special shout-out, uh, we got a side note here to the family of Chadwick Boseman. Yes. Uh, Rob texted me last night yes. about that. That and was I, terrible. I hated to hear that. That is, uh, cancer is a, is a bad thing. And, and he was our generation, so... Uh, yeah, he was uh, he, younger than us. Yeah, a little bit. But I uh, well, hate to hear that. Talented actor. So yeah, great guy. My shout-out for that. But, um, yeah, so it's... Sometimes our, 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 our uh, heroes and whatnot aren't with us anymore, so Rob and I like to keep the... Plastic version on hand. <laughs> yep. All right, Rob. It is your turn, oh, my friend. My turn. Okay. Rob's first pick. Okay. And you don't know what I'm picking. I have no idea. Okay. Oh yeah, today's episode was our first episode, and I have I told Rob I, I showed him all my cards, and he's like, "Yeah, I'll just uh, I'll just bring mine. I got him picked out. Wouldn't tell me what it was, so I have no idea what he's picking." Okay. My first figure is from 2002. Oh, you got the date. You got and the it's date from, down. It is Beast Man. Ah, from Masters of the Universe, made by the Four Horsemen. All right, sculpted so by the Four Horsemen. This one is the I'm holding it for Rob. The camera's yeah. a little closer to me, and that's a good sculpt. Growing up, after uh, Masters of the Universe was the first thing that I got into. After I kind of 
died down originally in Star Wars back in the 80s. And I always liked Beastman just because I loved, I've always loved werewolves and wolfmen. And he kind of looked like that to me. But this sculpture here that came out in 2002, uh, it's, it's by the Four Horsemen, whoever they are. I don't know. Just what I, when I was trying to figure out the time period when this figure came out, um, I, I came across their name. And apparently they're significant if, you, if you're into the world of who sculpts what. But this figure is just, it's just so well done. And it's so what Beastman should be. And I still think it's one of the best sculpted looking mass market figures I've ever seen. And it's just a great figure. I have to agree with you on that. Mm -hmm. I, did, I certainly didn't pick this one today. And from this my actually is not part of it. What did you do with this? This was from a McFarland's toy. Ah, uh, that's right. Odin or something that I just uh, robbed off of it just because I thought it looked cool. You, wait, let me get this straight. You robbed something. <laughs> <We don't know. laughs> okay. But yeah, dad joke with no kids. No kids, yes. <laughs> Yeah, but I did. So, because um, uh, I had to, I think uh, Ted Gallup gave me the Odin figure for a Christmas present or something. Did you from the McFarland? Yeah. Okay. And um, it fell apart because really? back then he used really cheap plastic for right. stuff. Right. Right. So I used, um, but I thought that uh, whatever skulls those are, I just thought it would look good. With, it, of with course, Beastman holding it. It, up. it looked like it looks like Beastman yeah. went on some kind of bone collecting spree, yeah. yep. like proving his name. Yeah, this is not the Beastman from the eighties. Absolutely not. No, this is the this is an actual. That's a stone cold beast. killer right there. Beast yeah. right there. That's right. Yep. All right, that's cool. So, that's beast a good Man. choice. I didn't have Beastman as a kid. Yep. I uh, I didn't have Beastman as a kid, and uh, oh, the original Beastman. If you go back and look at him, he's he's almost like um, I don't know. It's it's. It's a very disturbing looking figure. If you his really face is weird. It almost looks like a clown yeah. face. It's yeah. weird. Yeah, no, it's, it's very weird. He's got that pasty clown face thing going on. I don't know what that's all about. That is weird. Okay. Chris's second pick. Up, I'm going to go ahead and go back to G.I. Joe Outback. But I have two representations of G.I. Joe Outback because I was a huge fan of G.I. Joe Outback. And when he came out in like... You know, I, did, I should have done the research on this one. Yeah. I think it was 86. I think G.I. Joe. Yeah, so this is from the original line back in the... Yeah, the oh, absolutely. Line. Yeah, this is the original line back in okay. 86. For those of you listening to that, maybe you listen to the podcast or whatever, or even watching it, I'm a bigger G.I. Joe fan than Rob. Much bigger. He's a... Uh, a He's a, he's got a lot of comic stuff that I never delved into. So like the Marvel stuff, DC stuff, he knows that way better than I do. Of course, I've been with catch up a little bit of speed because of the movies, but I still yeah. have no dialogue. But as far as GI Joe goes, yep. these guys, this is, this is kind of my domain. I was a GI Joe dabbler at best. I you dabbled. Know. I tried two or three times, but I just never could stick with it. Yeah, it's it's been one of those that, that just man, it was uh, it it yeah. was the right generation. I was one year younger than Rob, so it was yeah. perfect age for me. And this one, let's see, this is the one they came out with. This is the new version, the 25th anniversary. Of course, it was probably closer to 30th by the time they released it. That's a good looking figure. It is. Now, was he supposed to be Australian? Is that why it's called Outback? Or? You know, I think he was just, he was a survivalist. He was prepping before prepping was a thing. Uh, I think that's what, I think that's what Outback ready. was. Get ready for Cobra to win. That's right. That's right. Now, the funny thing about this, his shirt still says survival on it like he did back yeah. in the day. But Rob and I... Well, let's just go ahead and take a minute to discuss this that we this thing that we we absolutely hate. Right. Rob and I, for the most part, hate yeah. the articulated chest or oh my, where uh, they can where they can, why, why would, does the character I not don't, do that? I don't understand why you. I, I can do this at best. And but it, the looks, waist joint it looks does terrible. That. It looks bad. So if you've got an articulated uh, rib cage or something like yeah. that, whatever it is, if you've got that articulated rib cage, we almost hate that figure. But the 25th anniversary solves that. By putting the flag jacket on him, if you will, the yep. little uh, the little Molly vest, if, or whatever that is. So Outback is one of those characters, and I will tell you this: in 1982, I go to my cousin Jason's house, and I said, "Hey, Jason," I said, uh, "He said, yeah, come here, we're playing GI Joe," and I was like, "What?" He said, "Yeah, we're playing GI Joe," and I was like, "Okay." So I get there, and I see these little plastic creations, mm -hmm. and it, growing up in the country. Yep. You know, I mean, it's perfect because you could play in the mud. You didn't have to have the steel and the plastic like Star Wars kind of requires, you know. Yep. So if you didn't have any any money as a kid, you just pile a bunch of mud up, pour water around it. You got a play set for G.I. Joe. That's okay. part of the reason it, it gets me right here. So that's yep. that's my second pick. Was there an Australian G.I. Joe? I'm, yeah, there was, yeah, there was definitely an Australian G.I. Joe. I don't remember his name. Was it Rakonda? I don't know. Rakonda? Or was, I think I'm thinking about Wild Bill was like a Texan, wasn't he? he I think so. I think, and he was a helicopter pilot. Said he hauled a lot. He was a helicopter pilot, yeah. and he was uh, he. The reason why my only 
affinity to Wild Bill. Was he the one that wore the hat with yeah. the one side stuck? Up? Well, Ricondo did that too. Okay. So, but I think Wild Bill had the full cowboy hat. Okay. And then I'm sure I'll put a graphic out that proves that on after this. You know? Probably. Yeah. <laughs> but, anyway, yeah. Yeah. but you know, the funny thing is, is that um, is that my my only aff- affinity to Wild Bill, the only affinity, is on the back of his card. Never owned him, but in the back of his card is how much it says how he he how much he respects Wild Weasel because yeah. Wild Weasel was such a good Cobra pilot, and yeah. and that was always one of my mm-hmm. favorite figures. So I, I actually have a, I actually have a connection to Wild Bill. In that I had a, growing up, I had a friend that was really into G.I. Joe. It was his birthday. And so we went to the um, store, probably Roses. Ah, oh, Roses. And um, I bought him, a, we got him a Wild Bill action figure. It was like, but his birthday, this was like two or three days ahead of his birthday. And so I'm, let's see, probably when, when this was going on, I was probably not even 10 or so. I obsessed over that figure. Because, Wild Bill? Yeah. And I think it was nothing more than just greed on my part. Because... <laughs> I hate, I hate, I hate, I hate, uh, I wanted it because it was there. Yeah, and but I, you were giving it to and such. And I, I remember endlessly trying to talk my mom into sh- me just having the figure and getting him something else. <laughs> and um, she would not remain. So I never, never had a wild bill. So Actually, that's your, that's your, we'll have to talk about a Roses story yeah. in, a, in a minute. Rob and I shared a, a good Roses uh, story connection. Okay. Rob's second pick. And it is vintage. It is from original line. Had it when I was a kid. Seventy-seven. Uh you you, you went. You came out of the gate swinging, Rob. Vintage Boba Fett. He brought the big guns. You mean no no gate. rocket hill stand, no rocket firing uh, jetpack. But I think what made Boba Fett so cool as a figure is everywhere you look on him as a kid, because really in the movies you couldn't get a really close up look at all his appendages and all the things he had and right. all that because there was no. It wasn't on uh, VHS or anything because it didn't exist. Yeah, yeah, that's right. And uh, but everywhere you look, there's a weapon here. There's a weapon there. Oh yeah. There's uh, a weapon here. You can tell there's a jetpack. He's got the visor. This thing you don't know what, but it does something coming out the side of his head. And it was just a. I think this figure along it helped stoke the legend of Boba Fett. Oh, I, I uh, agree. For, for more than anything else. And, uh, uh, and it's just it is just a it's to this day it's still a great looking figure. Oh, oh yeah, you know it's you well, know this is easily still in the top three of best looking vets. Well, and you had jonesed about getting the Hot Toys Boba Fett in the vintage. Yeah, when I saw the Hot Toys Boba know. Fett, because yeah. I'd, I'd kind of sworn off like I'm done with Hot Toys because you know I'm I'm older, you know, kids in college, I don't got time to spend money on that. But oh, when I saw that vintage Boba Fett yeah. style Hot Toys, yeah, it's, I, I hovered over that. <laughs> Click button, order button. Did you really? For a while. You were that. You were there. I was. I, yeah. was. I mean, this finger was cramped by the time it was over. Well, on your on your Boba Fett, and I have to agree yes. with you 100. percent This kind of brings me up to my. I, I think it was, and I don't know if you shared this with me at all. And we've never really talked about. I'm, I, I may have mentioned this to you. The, the first time I saw this figure, uh, my next door neighbor had it, and his mom ended up being my, my choral teacher. His grandmother was my next door neighbor, but his mom ended up being my, my choral teacher. Yep. Shaped me to uh, the uh, person I am today and what I would do with my music career, but. But, so had it not been for Boba Fett, I would not be a musician. But, <laughs> um, but no, seriously, uh, I, I remember seeing this figure at, at Jeff Cerency's house, and I thought it was the coolest thing in the world. And it was after Empire, obviously, came yeah. out, because he had an ad ad. But the thing is, is um, I think, and I don't know if you can relate to me on this, I actually l- love Star Wars toys actually more than I love the movies. Well, it, yeah, well, by then... Uh, once they were going from the theaters, you, didn't you see just it. you just caught them by happenstance on that's right uh, network TV. That's right. Every now and then. That's right. And you didn't know when it was coming. I remember it would just. I remember I was actually I was like Pavlov's dog to the 20th century theme fanfare <laughs> when she heard it. Because uh, yeah. whenever I'd hear it on TV, I was like Star Wars, and then I go to be like um, some other Fox property that I could care less. <laughs> that's right. That's right. But yeah, you heard that, right. and yeah. that, and then you're about to hear it. Dun, dun, yeah. dun, that's right. Well, you know, the um, the other thing about that, too, is that I think that with me, with the Star Wars stuff, you know, I'm being from Claxton, I didn't, I was born in 74, obviously Generation X, mm-hmm. but, you know, I didn't see Star Wars in the theater. I would have been three. Yeah. And it's not a, that's not a movie mom or dad would take me to. My brother was, you know, 10 years older. He was 13. He was the perfect age for, for understanding it. But he didn't see it either in the theater. I mean, or, excuse me, I, I don't know if he did or not, but he told me about it. And it was just, yeah. uh, it was just blowing my mind. But... 
all those adventures that we grew up doing. We I, we grew up in creating way more adventures than Lucas ever wrote. <laughs> oh yeah, I mean way more adventures. Yes. You know, and and if you didn't see the movie, he had to make yeah. up what this guy did. Yeah. So that's well, part of thing Generation yeah. X. I think that's part of. Well, I remember. Um, I did go. To, I did go to the theater to see it. But what people forget is Star Wars. Was, it was released in seventy seven, but then it was re released in seventy eight. It was re released in seventy nine. So I'm sure. I probably saw it in 78 when I was five or six. Mm. I don't think I saw I don't, I don't remember. I remember seeing it at the theater. You do? My mom took me to see it probably three or four times. See, the only one I saw in the yeah. theater that I remember seeing in the theater was Return of the Jedi. I remember yeah. that vividly. And my library at school had um, the Star Wars storybook. Right. And so I checked that out. I checked it out endlessly. Yeah. And so I so was, you, you didn't just buy it. Yeah. You kept so it, had, it had the pictures, and I was familiar with those uh, images and read, read the story and, and all that. In fact, um, I was good. Uh, I, I came real close to the um, librarian <laughs> there. and I, uh, You're striking because, up deals with the librarian. Yeah, and, <laughs> and no joke. Uh, so this book that I checked out endlessly, when I was in seventh or eighth grade, they were having a book throwaway, and she saved that hardback Star Wars storybook and gave it to me. And I no have it, kidding. I have it at the house. Oh, man. That is, it, is, it is ragged out because yeah. it was checked out by, by thousands you. of kids. That's right. You know, and so, but I've got it. It's there. And it's, it's one of my uh, prized uh, possessions. It's one of your go-tos. Out there. That's yeah. awesome, actually. Yeah. That's really, really cool. I didn't know that. Yeah, oh, yeah. And, and one last thing uh, that was just kind of cool. I've got, um, I had two of these. And one of them was all chipped up and uh, paint's nearly gone and all that. And so I actually took that one to um, uh, up to Gallops mm-hmm. and Benji. That's right. Painted it. Benji painted, painted it in Django Fett's colors. That's right. Oh, oh no, yeah, that's right. Yeah. That's why so I have a that. so I have a that's vintage a vintage uh, Django to go along with it. For those of you that are uh, not Statesboro native, we have a, a comic shop. It's called Galactic now. It's called Gallops. Yeah. Gallops back in the day when I discovered it. And uh, I never went as a kid. My friend did. <laughs> Because he collected comics, mm-hmm. and um, I discovered it when I was eighteen. And you definitely made some mortgage payments. Oh yeah, I, I'm pretty sure I um, paid for at least one of Ted's vehicles. You absolutely did. There. Ted would smile when he saw me coming. Oh, I would yeah. too. Yeah, that's right. I would have too. Had you been a customer? Well, because at that time I had a, um, I was making, I was going to school, but also had a full time job. So I was eighteen, living at home, didn't have a girlfriend. Surprise. Uh, and making fifteen thousand dollars a year. Oh God, yeah. And so then, I had I had disposable income. And in the nineties, that yes. was a lot of money. It was, yeah. and for an eighteen year old, yes. Oh I God, had, yeah. and I had disposable income. So I, I, um, I did what I always wanted to do as a kid, and I went to Gallops every week, and I bought what I wanted. What you wanted? Yep. That's right. That's actually, uh, yep. that's actually kind of crazy. That was a dream. That's awesome. Yeah. yeah. All right. So the next one is my choice, yes. and I'm gonna go digging a little bit sideways in the well here. Chris's third pick. Uh, this one is one of my all-time favorite figures. This is a, a Raven Spawn. This is from the McFarlane uh, toy line, Raven Spawn. Uh, I've always felt like this figure looked like it should be on the cover of a Jethro Tull album. <laughs> you know, it needs it looks to like be. an executioner. That's right. Yeah, he's got those something about that. Everything about this guy, I love. I love the, yeah. the bat drapes and kind oh, of. McFarlane does great. His he, he hires great sculptors. He, he does now. Does he? I'm curious about this. I know he's an artist and a visual artist. Does he ever do any of the sculpting? I have no idea. You know what? We, we should. One of the things that we're going to do. Rob and I have talked about for Gen X uh, for the podcast. What we're going to do is we're going to do uh, in, interviews with people too. And some of them you'll know. Some of them you'll see them on TV. And some of you've seen movies. I've already got some on the line. Um, and I don't I even know if I have the ability to call Todd McFarlane. But the worst you can say is no. So one day we're going to call Todd McFarlane. <laughs> the worst thing you can say is his publicist can say no. Well, that's true. Yeah. Or maybe his publicist assistant can yeah. say no. Or cease and desist letter. But I've gotten that. Well, then too. you have a signature. I, I've got collections and some are framed on the wall. I have, I have a signed McFarlane comic book. I have a signed cease and desist letter from Lucasfilm. That's true, you do. <laughs> yeah. And Gibson. And Gibson. Thanks. All yeah. right, let's see. But anyway, let's get back to what yes. I'm not in trouble for. And that is, uh, I absolutely love this figure. Uh, it's, I love the color tone. I love the palette. You use slight browns in yeah. there. Now, in this one, even though this has the 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 joint, the torso, it's covered. It's nicely. covered completely because yep. it looks like plating of armor or something Definitely. like that. So it looks killer. Yep. Um, not until a few years ago. It's kind of funny with McFarlane figures. Sometimes I I'll buy them and I won't notice something about them until years. Mm-hmm. I never noticed how big his fingers were. Like, oh, but yeah. then again, Raven. That yeah. makes sense. They're kind of talons, right? Yep. So, but he's, you know, I've never noticed that until actually uh, you know, a few years ago after having it. 
but I love the skull, I love the detail here. Um, side note on McFarland uh, figures, um, you know, Rob and I talk about this all the time. Whatever, whatever plastic he uses is definitely a, um, it's definitely a, uh, it's different. It's made out of a different material. I'm not exactly sure what he's sculpting with, but you, you, you definitely want to treat these it's guys. It's a hard plastic, and it's, it tends to, the things I've, the few McFarland figures I've had, I've noticed it's very hard plastic, and they tend to, the older ones tend to separate at the seams some. At the joint seams? Well, no, or, like, like, you know, right like here? The, like the leg is oh, oh, yeah. two pieces so of the, the mold together. Seam, the mold seam. And the mold seam. Okay. Mold. Yeah, I got smart. Yeah, so this one is, <clears throat> what's really cool about this to me is that, uh, you know, he, I think he hit all the beats with this. Uh, for yeah. me, at least. And I'm like, okay, the shape, it's menacing. It's, mm -hmm. it's uh, everything about this figure is just absolutely cool. So I just, I just fell in love yeah. with it from, and I only own a couple of McFarlane figures, and it's only because... Yeah. Or, or at least the ones that are based on comic book terrors. When he did the monster series, you know, I bought yeah, all those. I like Every those. Halloween, I go shopping for McFarlane monster figures because I don't want to go off the off the uh, the beaten path and buy a ton yeah. of you know uh, pumpkins and skulls for the house anymore. But I can always put one of those up somewhere. Yeah. So I love those stuff. Exactly. So my my third pick is Raven Spawn. Cool. All right, you up, Rob? All right. Rob's third pick. I've got here, and I think this is this is one of my favorite figures because it is just so well done, especially for a mass market figure. Batgirl, Barbara Gordon, Batgirl. Who is Barbara Gordon? Uh, Barbara Gordon is Jim Gordon's daughter. Jim Gordon? You mean uh, you mean Commissioner Gordon? Commissioner Gordon. Okay. Well, his name's Jim. I don't know. I Jim just thought it was Commissioner. No. <laughs> I think it's um um in some cases it's his daughter and. No, in, in the old 66 show, it's his daughter as well, I believe. Really? Or his niece. Bat? Oh, okay, okay, okay. In the comics, though, it's his, it's his daughter. Okay. I'm and... almost fairly certain. But just that, just the, the sculpt of this, it's, um, she's totally feminine without being overly trampy, uh, like they try to do with so many comic books. You mean without uh, being Rob Leefield? Yeah, exactly. Okay. And, um, but the, the bright plastic, the contrast of the dark black with the bright yellow. I see that. And then her red hair. And then, like I said, it's just a great pose. And it's just a great figure. I but, don't know what line this is from. It, um, you know what? This almost, and I know that's... But I've had it. I've had it at least 10 to 15 years. Okay. And it, it's not, I know that this is, I'm out of my wheelhouse here, but yeah. it does remind me at least in the style of Alex Ross. A little bit, but it's, that's not an option. I, I knew that, yeah, but, but, it, but it could yeah. fit in that, yeah. you know. And I love the way they do the cape. Um, mm -hmm. It just, it, the way it fits over her shoulders. And then the way the, the cape is yellow on the inside and black on the outside. It's just a, just one of my favorite figures. Like it's just an I, awesome, awesome figure. I like that boot detail. Yeah. I like that boot detail. That's yeah. cool. That's and really that's cool. The back. And I don't know, you know, we've talked about this. I talked about this to my mother-in-law one time. Yeah. Um, when they first came out with that Indiana Jones, uh, when the... When Hot Toys released the Indiana Jones uh, figure, yeah. which was an Arnie Kim sculpture. Now, Arnie Kim, uh, for those of you who don't know, Arnie Kim is a sculptor out of uh, South Korea, who actually is also a musician. Uh, he, he plays a little guitar and things like that as well. Um, he's an amazing, amazing sculptor. And Arnie and I were just emailing back and forth one day, and uh, before he was even working with Hot Toys, he wasn't working with Hot Toys or Interbay or anybody yeah. at the time. And I emailed him and I said, "Hey, what's the chance of me, you know, buying an Indiana Jones from you?" Just the, the artwork was just through the roof. Yeah. The detail was just through the roof. And I couldn't believe it was that good. I couldn't believe that you could look at a figure's eyes and see the pink <laughs> on, on, on the bottom of the eyelid. I couldn't believe yeah. it. And so Arnie uh, wrote me back and said, well, you know, they're not for sale, but, you know, we might have something coming up. And surely, surely enough, you know, sooner or later, he started working with Hot Toys and started sculpting yeah. those. And so, uh, and he's yeah. just, you know, you get talented Sculptors like that, and I appreciate the artistic quality of stuff yeah. like that. That's part of my thing yeah. with the collector. That's part. Of, I mean, I'd, I'd love to tell everyone that I drink the finest yeah. champagne and have the finest sculptures, but the reality <laughs> is, I do. I think they're art. I mean, yeah. they're just they are. they're they're art and, and twelve inches tall. You know, I mean, or six inches tall, or three inches tall. Yeah. It's just beautiful. So yeah, it's part of my thing too. So I, I see why you like that. Yeah, I see why you like yeah. that. Like I said, just a, you just tell they put whoever did this put some time into it. Oh yeah, you know, to make it a good figure, and they did. Yep. If you're fighting crime, though, that yellow might not be the one thing you want to show, but I see why they did it. Yeah. It looks good. It exactly. definitely yep. looks good. All right. All right. So number four. On my Chris's fourth pick is the Cobra Viper. Oh, yeah. Now, I, I mean. I figured that was going to be there because you, you love you, that know, you know I love yeah. Vipers. Okay. Yeah. Rob knows me. 
I'm a huge, huge Cobra Viper fan. Um, you know, the I, okay, let me talk about the bonuses you get with this guy. First of all, I'm a sucker for helmets. I've already talked about that. If you got a sweet helmet, and this guy, he hits all the major points. You get the sweet looking Cobra Commander looking helmet, yep. right? You get you get the the flak jacket vest, couple grenades. You get the you know the mini gun, whatever. You get the uh, assault rifle, I guess. You get the uh, the backpack. I love his. I love what they did in the 25th anniversary series, and I think they did this one with the 30th. But I love his the little visor. Like, why do you have you have a shield of face mask, but then you have goggles? What yeah. are you gonna do with those goggles? You have a shield face mask. Yeah. But as you know, 12, 13 maybe year old they're Chris, like, maybe they're like um, um, night vision. Through the maybe, maybe. Or maybe that shield retracts back up and then he needs the goggles for awesome. something else. I don't know. But if, you know, 12-year-old Chris didn't really ask those questions. He just made a cool helmet accessory. So I now, what it. was the Viper? Because it wasn't just one guy. They were like, oh, they were, they yeah. were like shock troops or something? They were supposed to be, they weren't quite as elite as Crimson Guard, but right. they were definitely better than the better than your, 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 you know, your, your modern day, I should say, your, yeah. your COVID troopers. Yeah, the COVID of, troopers. You know, yeah. <laughs> Uh, but I said COVID troopers these yeah. days because they're all wearing masks. I think even stormtroopers are better than the Cobra infantry. Oh yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. But your standard Cobra troopers, the little blue guys with the black mask, yeah. they're just kind of you know blue laser fodder or whatever. So they were more specialized. Groups. These guys were definitely more special, and they're definitely armed more to the hill. He's got yeah. the he's got the gauntlets, the gloves, the combat boots. Back in the day, yeah. I was a sucker for tucked in pants and the boots. That's <laughs> yeah. what I loved in a figure. And now, Did I, you ever try that in real life? It yes. does not work. Yes, I no you. Okay, it's not comfortable, but it, no. But the military used to do it in the eighties. Yeah. And now I love the figures. Now how they make the, the pants go over. Yeah. I love that now. Yeah. I think that's cool. I think it's a, a much much needed change in the action figure world. So thank you, Hasbro, for making that change. However, I love it with this guy. This thing's yeah. awesome. That's good. That's right. a good figure. Yeah, I, I think so. And you know they came with a variation. Well, if I was to have a GI Joe figure on display, I'd probably go with the Cobra Viper. I knew you love me, man. Yeah. <laughs> and you know the funny thing about this is. Is that they made two variation, variations of his visor? They had the dull matte, you know, finish, mm -hmm. which is like a silver paint, you know, and like a tester silver paint. Yeah. And then this is a really shiny chrome silver. I saw it. I didn't, you know, I didn't expect it out the gate, but uh, yeah, I like the chrome. I want to see myself when I look into it. Do you, do you have a Viper figure at all? Uh, I think I had one at one time, mm -hmm. and um, I think I packed it up and it's somewhere in the box. Yeah, let that guy out, of, man. I like, cause that guy one time I, I did have a few GI Joe things out and about, yeah. and then I was like, nah, I need to. You need the what? The I room? need the room oh, for yeah. other things. So you you need to display. I packed the all the GI Joe's. You're, you're, how many somebody, gave, somebody gave me a his tech one time. Really? Yeah. You know I that's like, it, you can have it. You know that's like the holy grail of like GI Joe collecting. His tech? Well, okay. Here is here's the thing. It never was with me, so it's, yeah. it has no sentimental value as far as that for me. Right. But because I'm like, why would you have your guy sitting out front in the front of the big glass? Yeah. That's like you're totally asking to be shot. However. If you go to like hisstank.com, that's a big GI Joe form. That's what those guys do. Right. So if you're if you're a GI Joe collector, and that's where you go, you got the yojo.com and hisstank.com. Those are two big yeah. GI Joe collectors. One thing I would like to have again, just because my favorite, I did have a few, I did have a few GI Joe things, and uh, well, I, I take about there's two things I would like to have again if I ever have plenty of money to track them down. One is the uh, from the very original line. Uh, I'm talking, when I say original, I'm not talking about the 82. 12 inch ones from way back. Which one? 82. 82. Our generation. Gen X. The Gen X. Is the, um, the motorcycle with the Gatling gun sidecar. Hand down. Yeah, I had it, but it's. Uh, that was a cheap and there, may, there may be some pieces yeah. of it still around the house, but I don't know where. And um, the um, the Cobra helicopter. The Fang? Yeah, with the guys. A total, totally open cock. Yep, the Fang. And see, that's because G.I. Joe had this, like. Uh, Huge helicopter, um, totally sealed in. That's right. The tomahawk. Muscles. And then the tomahawk. Cobra had this little tiny yep. one man. That thing was fun to play with. It, it was. was fun to play with. Did you have that? Uh, yes, I did. I had it too. Yeah. Now, I'll give a shout out to my cousin Troy, who didn't have that growing up. Uh, and he always he told me years ago he was always jealous of, of that <laughs> I had the thing. So he moved out to uh, Seattle. And. Uh, one day he goes open the mail and he has a box for me and it's like it's a Cobra Fang. Yeah. And the funny thing is, you know, when I bought that for Troy, it was like, you know, twenty five dollars. Now that same exact thing goes for like hundred and fifty. Yeah. On Amazon or eBay, so it's like. Yeah, I don't want to. I don't have that many. I don't have that big of a box. Yeah, I'm about to say I don't. I don't. And I love the Fang, but I don't know if I got that either. So. All right. Okay. Rob's Next. number four. This is my favorite comic book villain of all time, and I have waited patiently for. 20 years to find a figure that I felt did him justice. All right. I guess. Rob's fourth pick. All right. 
I guess. And I finally did about several months ago. Victor uh, Von Doom. This is great, great figure. Um, just it it looks like Doctor Doom from the comics. I uh, I've had some. Uh, there were, they made a Marvel Select figure several years ago that was decent, but just didn't do him the the um, cow. I mean, the um, hood wasn't right and all this. And what I hope is when Disney finally does Marvel Studios finally does Doctor Doom. You don't have to change anything. Just make this and put it on screen. So are you listening, Disney? It is simple as can be. Just make this. That's what Rob says. Rob says... And make it six foot eight. Is that how tall he is? Probably, I don't know. He's probably tall. Well, I must you know his specifics. I mean, if I, would, I, would, I would want to be tall if I was Wait, Dr. Doom. That, well, now, you know what would be really, really I mean, cool. if Dr. Doom wanted here and he was four foot three, he wouldn't be doing as intimidating. <laughs> Danny DeVito yeah. playing Dr. Doom. Yeah. <laughs> So it wouldn't, it wouldn't work. So I need, yeah. So basically, like I said, make, um, and I think I, I love Doom so much because who's my favorite Star Wars character? Uh, and who does he look like a little bit? Wait, well, I, I'm wasn't right. gonna, I was about to say, I, yeah. I, I wasn't going to say Phasmo because he's silver, but no, I know that's not your no. favorite Star Wars character. But he looks like um, there's, 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 some, there's some silhouette resemblances between Vader and Doom. Oh yeah, I could. Well, the helmet. If if yeah. you think of Vader's helmet and that shape to the silhouette and the cape, yeah, yep. I see that. Well, let me ask you this: it'd be it'd be really cool if if you had this real helmet. That'd be awesome. Yeah, it would be. If you had, if that. I just had one that I could put on display. Oh, that'd be really cool that if you had that. Yeah. Man, you know, if you had a really good friend, I bet you he'd get you one of those. If he gave me one. Yeah, oh, I bet he would. That'd it, be awesome. It, it is on display. All right, all right, that's cool. I'm like I killed Doctor Doom. It took his helmet. It took his head, head, and he just yeah. sat in a, in a little curio cabinet. Yeah. That's it, cool. It figure. does something. It actually has an action. He and you can it. see the rivets. Actually, I like the fact you can see the rivets. In Let the me say he does something. I don't, an action feature. There's a button back here. You don't need buttons. Oh no, that's not a button. That's just where the cape goes. Okay. In. There's okay. no button here. If you're listening to this in the podcast, there's no button. Uh, yeah, and then Steven got his gun, and I'm, I love the holster. Like I, I, I love a holster. I love it when you can holster. Yeah, a gun, on yeah. a figure. When we were kids, That's you couldn't awesome. do that with GI Joe. Now they make them all do that. Yeah, and this this is the perfect. This hand is the perfect villain hand because that's what villains do. Yeah, why do they, they do, do their that? hands up like that? Why do they do that? I don't know what they do. They do their and hand just, in like a uh, and do more than anybody does that. They so. kind of do it in a Shakespearean that's sort right. of. Yeah, yeah. So, a Shakespearean pose. Yeah. So I want to see this in a movie. A this. Doctor Doom in a this. movie. Make him look like this. Disney. That's all you got to do. How simple could that be? That couldn't be more simple. I, I, I that agree. couldn't be more simple. Okay. All right. All right. Well, let's see. I'm coming here. My last one. My last yep. pick. Okay. So my last pick of the day is uh, very, very special to my heart, and I picked him for a reason. It is Chris's final pick. Is Han Solo in the Stormtrooper disguise? Han Solo. Uh, this this precedes the Power of the Force. Okay. This precedes that because it was what they came out with right before they released that line in 95. Really? Mm-hmm. Yeah, and it, well, it's, I'm pretty damn sure because here's how I found that it. That doesn't sound right. Okay, it, it may not sound right. Now, I'm, I'm going to let you research that for our next yeah, show. You can, that, yeah. you can come back on our next show. I think I'm going to have to prove you wrong. You're going to have to prove me wrong. That's I'll, I'll, I'll admit if you're right. I would, well, that, okay, you will. Yes. Okay, you heard that, folks. If yep. I'm right, Rob will admit that I'm right. But, but if I'm, I'm, I'm fairly definite you're wrong. And if, and if I'm wrong, I will admit that he proved me wrong. Yep. All right. So you can tell we've been friends for a while. Yeah. So the reason why I like this is uh, is twofold. First of all, he's one of those figures, kid. Uh, you know, when they came out with the Luke Skywalker, like I mentioned with the removable helmet, there he is in his beautiful Harrison Ford likeness. There he is with his helmet. And uh, but I will tell you this: uh, this one, as you know, was actually a giveaway. Yep. It was you had Fruit to have loops. like yes, you had to have two proofs of purchase. I went back and researched it mm-hmm. because I, I remembered that. I actually ate enough to get four of these bad boys. And if you look at this, look at the address. It's still at my old address in college, yep. 1818 Chandler Road, Apartment 7. So for those of you who knew me in college, that's where I lived in town club back in the day. I just bought two boxes of Fruit Loops and threw one away. Did you really? Yeah. Okay, well, here's what I did. <laughs> I ate so many Fruit Loops that I was pooping rainbows for a month, yeah. man. It was yeah. it was something on my digestive system, and it took me another year or two to well, eat Fruit Loops my, again. My, my thinking was two boxes of Fruit Loops is the same cost as a figure would have been. Mm-hmm. About seven, 
probably cheaper. Oh, yeah, but you were living and, at home and making fifteen thousand dollars. Did you have a to? Year. Did you have to send some money to them too? It's like oh, yeah, it just you had to pay purchase. shipping. You had to pay shipping. Yeah. yeah. So it was so basically, yeah. I paid them. I just got thing. one. I didn't get four. No, I got four. I just got one. I got four. But well, then they then they made the figure. Yes, that's right. But it's not as good. How do you tell the, the difference between the Fruit I, Loops figure and the one that they finally released I think for sale? They did a slightly different arm pose. You see how uh-huh. his you see how his arm shifts down right there? Yeah. For the gun angle, I think that they made a slightly different arm pose. Uh-huh. Now I will say this about this figure because um, I do have several of them, but only one's a Fruit Loops. Really? Yeah. So I've got all four, and I've got the, I've got all four of the Fruit Loops, and then I've got some yeah. other ones around. I'm gonna look at go look at mine and see if I can tell the difference. Well, we also got to research that and find out for next week episodes if it's uh, yeah. if it's actually before the Power of the Force line. That's true. All right. Okay. So the other thing on this is this is what I'll tell you, and you can still see the date on that. It's uh, J- June 11th of 90. Ooh, that's eight. Oh, I was yeah. wrong. Yeah, because Power of the Force came wrong. out 95. Though. I'm already wrong. There you go. I'm already wrong. Don't we don't even have to look it up. I'm wrong. All right, so I will tip my hat to you, sir. You Bow yes. on that. I will. Rob is correct. All right, so actually, you know, but, the, but here's why I'm here's why I'm such a huge fan of this, and this was this brings back a really cool memory. The reason why I got this one, this one right here, that's unopened and still sealed, which is not a big deal for either oh, one of really? us. Yeah, there's that's a figure there. there. Yeah, that's the one that's unsealed. Uh, but the reason why I saved this one is because Hasbro. I, they sent me, I ate eight boxes of Fruit Loops, and they sent me three figures, and they never sent my fourth one. Uh-huh. So I wrote them a very nice form letter <laughs> explaining to them that, hey, you know, I ate, I ate eight boxes of Fruit Loops, only got the three, and they actually were nice now. <laughs> <laughs> hey, guys, I have Off gained six pounds of yeah. Han Solo fat. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, well, what they did was they finally, they actually caved, and they sent me a figure. So Hasbro, thank you for doing the right thing for a broke college student. I certainly do appreciate it. Yes. So thank you. All right, let's see. Now, we're going to wrap up this segment with Rob's fifth figure. Rob's final pick. Uh, I don't know what it is. This one could be considered a little bit of a a cheat. It's a cheat. A cheat? I'm sorry. I don't mean to be hogging the... I I don't mean to be taking this solo. (laughs) This is not the original figure. This is a remake, Remake. but it's still awesome. From the 1984 Transformers Generation 1... Devastator. Is that a, are those is that all joint or is that different figures? That's all it's different figures. Is it really? Yeah, you could you could disassemble it though. Do not. I won't. Um, well, well, I got a question for you. Yeah. For you for you elaborate. Does this looks like it stays better together than the original? Because I remember you touched the original and it just fell. Oh apart. yeah, the original one you could not play with. It was awesome, but you could not you could not put it you could not play with it because it would fall apart in a heartbeat. Wow. But this figure this was this was Transformers first combiner. Okay. Which was a very cool concept. However, I got to thinking about it and Voltron. Voltron. I looked it up and the Voltron cartoon debuted before the Transformers cartoon did. Okay. So, and I'm pretty sure, I don't, I'm not, a, I know very, very little about Voltron, but I'm pretty sure they combined from the very start. The, the I think so, the lines came together. I think that was a thing from so the too. beginning. So, I, I'm pretty certain, and I'm not, a, I'm not, I was a Transformer dabbler. Yeah, more so than G.I. Joe. But I, I, I like them. But, um, so wait, you even got into Transformers more than you got into G.I. Joe? Yeah, I got into really? Transformers a lot more than I got into G.I. Joe. I didn't know that. But um, Did not know I'm that. fairly certain that Voltron uh, proceeds Devastator as a combiner of robots. I don't know if there's anything that precedes that. Um, if there's anyone actually watching and you know, uh, feel free to fill us in. Well, because uh, I don't want to know badly. If someone will tell me, I'll be glad, but I'm not going to research it. You know what I appreciate about, about Transformers as opposed to anything else that we talk about? Like, mm-hmm. I'll put this on the face and the camera. The engineering that goes into this. Yeah. The engineering that goes well, into this. Well, especially this one. Right. And here's why this is the best combiner to me. Go ahead. This was the first one. And you can look, and he okay. looks like a, like a uh, robot. He looks like a robot. I mean, he's got, a, he's got heft to him. You can tell, you can see the different parts. The crane still works. Yeah, you can see the different parts and all that. But the, you had to put, you had to put Devastator. Each piece came, each uh, figure came with the pieces needed to hook it all together. And oh, is that, is that how they did that? Yep. Now, later on when they made the other combiners, Bruticus, Minosaur, Superion, Defensor, they went, they went with a common uh, um, design for all of them. There was one big central piece. There was five. Like Devastator, six pieces, all the same size. Okay. Six figures, all the same size. The ones they did after that, um, 
they were five figures each. There was one big central piece figure. And then the other four were smaller figures that became the arms and legs. Okay. And they actually, and they made it all the same. And so they all look like um, stick robots. Oh, right, right, right. If you look them up online, uh, like I said, I think it's, it was Minosaur and Bruticus and Superion and Defensor, I think. Defensor. I don't remember him. He he wasn't on there. Actually, I don't remember the rest of those. Yeah. Minosaur was cars. Minosaur okay. was like the Decepticons getting into cars I don't for the first time, wow. and then Superion was uh, jets, but they were but they were Autobots. Yeah, because really you know that remember either. the um, the Autobots didn't have jets, right? You know, right, and, right. They and, couldn't fly. And Transformers what? didn't have cars. That's at the time. Yeah, that's right. You mean the yeah. Decepticons? Yeah, Decepticons. Yeah. So, um, but like I said, and they and, and you could and like I said, they made the other combiners so uniform that you could actually. Uh, mix and match them. So, like, you could put uh, Minosaur's le- car legs on Superion's main body because they all use the same square head. Okay. And uh, they made them cheaper and easier to do, but they don't have the um, the look of Devastator. No, he does look the best. I will yeah. say that they put all their yeah. they kind of they kind of you know yeah they he kinda just went. he look he looks like what he is like a combination yeah. a good combination of those now playability. Uh, like I said, you start moving those arms around, he's going down. You're not playing with this. He's going to fall apart. He's, but just, he's a he's a great display piece. Um, that is that is not vintage. That is the if you can tell if, for those who know, it's you can tell it's a brighter green. It is, and uh, but it's still a cool figure that I that I always kind of wanted. I had I never had the complete set. Um, so like I said, when I got older and got a little money, uh, finally got me a Devastator. It'd, and, it'd be uh, cool if they'd have done like a DOT yellow with this. Yeah, you know. I think I think in some, I think they did one time. Really? However, let me let me. I think they may have. I, I'm not a Transformers guy that big. It was either they they did it one time or it was a knockoff. Oh, okay. Well, there's a lot of that. Yeah, so, yeah a lot okay. of that. Well, you know, you mentioned earlier you're only you're only tying to Voltron. That's a good piece. Yeah. You're only tying to Voltron is what you kind of knew from the you know from the get go. My yeah. only connection to Voltron that I have of any. Um, I had it one time. Well, I, I gave it away. I did not. I had a I had a uh, Voltron watch that yeah. I spent every bit of ten dollars trying to get out of a bubblegum machine, <laughs> and I finally didn't get it. And then one day it was in uh, it was in like TGMY for like you know like two dollars. So I had to snatch it up. That was my only. I know exactly what you're talking about. TGMY. Yeah, you do. Um, Turtles, girls, and yo-yos. <laughs> no, it was like there was like three and owners. My pediatrician growing up was mm-hmm. Dr. Ledesma in Claxton. Oh yeah, okay, yeah. And um, so we'd go over there, and that's where many a Star Wars figure of my vintage collection because we would too. that would be my treat for being good. That's right. We'd stop my TG and watch. That's right. And I'd go get. You're like I'm pretty sure I got a Vader there, and uh, I know I think a Chewbacca. It seems like I could always. Even back then, I was aware that there were rare figures, right? Hard yeah. to find figures. Yeah, well, yeah, because you couldn't find them. Because you know, you'd see you'd see the same figures over and over again, but you knew when you saw certain figures, like oh, I, you know, that's when you really pleaded with your parents. <laughs> and uh, let me get down. And, uh, and so, so TG and Y always seemed to have that that figure that roses just didn't have. And, and I felt the same way about roses. Yeah, you know, we talked about that before, which I, which you know, I begged my mom to get me Serpento forever. Yeah, and I never could find it in TG and Y. So finally, it ended up being out in. Uh, in uh, Ro- I finally got it. Yeah, Rotus. Roses. Excuse yeah. me. Because one time with Voltron, one time I was at Gallops and um, he had one in his a box set, and I, I just thought it looked cool, like a tall one. Yeah. Okay. And I just thought it looked cool, and I bought it, and then it actually did look good, but um, I gave it to I eventually I gave it to a younger cousin. And okay. I, I kind of wish I kept it now because I'm greedy, but yeah. um, but that, I only had Voltron for a short time. <laughs> change it because originally your original concept was pick your five favorite action figures which i can't do and i was like i was because i was walking around my room and i was like 
I can't do it. I love everything in here. I can't do this. That's right. So then when you changed it, I was like, okay. That's right. Well, I thought about it too, and I thought I can't do it. And I, and I picked, and, and you did too, I think. I picked actually action figures. Right. That you that you actually play had playability. Yeah. yeah you play because, um, you know, if you're letting your kids play with a Hot Wheels figure. Oh, God. Uh, you either got too many dollars or not enough sense. That's, that's or cool. maybe it equals yeah. both. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, because that's... Yeah, yeah, that's not what you do. No. Um, you know, it's kind of funny about that, though. You know, Rob and I'm... We talk about action figures all the time, and my wife affectionately calls them dolls, and nope. she would be correct. Action figure collectibles. I, it, you know, AFC. It, it's I, I, either way. I'm, I'm cool with that. I'll, I'll admit I'm whatever. I, I get offended really. <laughs> he gets hurt. I don't. Yeah. But you know, the interesting thing is, is that um, you know, the, our, our love for it goes just a lot of memories to, to childhood, and, and I couldn't pick this. I couldn't pick the five that I wanted either. I, you know, I just couldn't go through and, and do it. And one of the things that I wanted to do was, uh, you know, in the day show was talk about. How when we do, um, you know, they they they're these little for whatever reason you like it and it may not tie into anything else other than it reminds you of something right. in your youth. You know, that's kind of what yeah. it is. And and uh, 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 Ashley's best friend, her daughter, came over one day. And Especially she, as you get older. That's right. Yeah, that's right. Well, and and, and we're gonna shoot some episodes, at least uh, an episode in Rob's room, at least an episode. I'm sure he doesn't yeah. want to be bringing this in here every time I shoot with all the <laughs> lights and all that. Yeah. But we're at least gonna shoot one episode there to give an idea of what he collects. Like we're in. You're one wall of my man cave, and you know I could do a 360 or whatever. But but the reality is is that um, you know it, it, Rob and I always talk about the collecting aspect of it, and let's and let's delve into that a little bit. Some people always you know there are some people out there that collect Hot Wheels, some people out there that collect blue glass, mm. some people collect you know chickens and roosters, and some people I mean you know in the South we got a lot of gun collectors out there, knife collectors. You got people that collect you know World War II stuff, it's whatever it is you know. And Rob and I you know we became friends because of that tie into not only did we really, really like Star Wars, mm -hmm. uh, but uh, we, we also were both, he was, the, I was the, he's, you said to me the other day, and I didn't know this, but I was the first collector that you ever knew. Yeah. Right. You were the first one that collected on the, on the level that I did. Right. Which we, you were the first one that, yeah, that had uh, a large collection and had it um, displayed and even though you lived in that tiny, uh, <laughs> tiny apartment, tiny apartment at the time, you still had it stuff out and displayed and you were the, you were the first one I met that collected Anywhere near the level that I did. Right. And that would be, it's still a hard stretch, but nonetheless, uh, now we still, it's kind of funny, Rob and I, I, I love, I, I love ribbing him a little bit when I own something that he doesn't have, yeah. and it, and, and, but his volume of collection is just through the roof. And I always, and we have, at least to some, you know, to a, a level of average respect for other people's collections and our collections. And, you know, we had, we went to an estate sale last year and, uh, or an estate collection, and it was interesting because when you when you watch somebody's collection, yeah. you get into their head a little bit. You do. You, you your get collection, this. yeah, because your, your collection is a very personal thing, right? That you want to share with other people, right? But it does, it does. You can kind of get into the mindset of a person when you see what they collect, right? Right. And some people, you know, like uh, especially in the in the South, I'm, I'm I'm sure it's all over, but you know, some oh, there's a lot of women down here that collect roosters or blue glass, and mm -hmm. and my mom collects depression glass. What is depression glass? Depression glass, okay, I'm going to get this completely wrong, but I, basically in a nutshell what it is, is back in the, during the depression, mm -hmm. they would, um, you, when you bought certain foods or staples, they would actually give you like little um, cups and saucers and things like with that it. to go with it. And they were all, always like a really deep color. Uh, I can bring some in. Okay. One day, but she's always played it, and, and probably and my mom, she collected a lot of things, and all. and then my dad, he kind of collected too, uh, with his oh, tractors. I was about to say your dad is not like trying that. to so, collect. Then. So I kind of, I kind of came, kind of got the collecting gene. Honest. For those of you who yes. have never, who do not know Rob or or what not, most of you. Yeah, yeah his. Well, that's okay. That'll change. You do now, though. Yeah, that's right. His dad is a tractor collector and has like old 1939 straight side and flare side oh, yeah. John yeah, Deere nice. tractors. All I mean, kinds, yeah. specifically John Deere for the most part. Yeah, right? he's got lately. He's gotten more into um, old tools and implements and okay and stuff. Okay, and such. Well, they're, they're lighter. He even has a spark plug collection. Really? Like an old old, really? old spark plug collection. Yep. Yeah. Oh, and coolest thing he's got is he has a collection of old locks. Old, old locks. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, that if, cool. And even a pair of those old handcuffs. Oh, yeah. Really? That's got the, um, the little the side, side yeah. twist thing. Oh, man. Yeah, those are awesome. You know, um, again, you can't hit the table, Rob. Can't hit the, the table. table. I'll be working with Rob about production here. Production here. 
When, when we get that nice wood table, pad it's not table. Made, yeah, we'll yeah. pad it for your hands. You know, you like the Swedish stuff. I'm, a, I'm just, a big finger roll person. <laughs> That's how I celebrate myself being clever. Well, I gotta admit, I did use. I'm not a big fan of the blue hummingbird. I did throw it on today's episode. Well, there goes a sponsorship. Well, there's. That's right. So we're Gen X. We're, 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 we do the Pearl Jam <laughs> yeah. thing. The heck with Ticketmaster. You know, we can each get a Bob Barker microphone. Oh, the long skinny thing. Yeah, the long, yeah, you know, when, and, and you guys that know me that have seen my podcast or would have seen my videos would have known I'm a musician, but, and it's funny whenever we go to play a wedding and somebody goes, like, we grab a microphone and they hold it down here because they've seen Bob Barker. I'm like, yeah. his is this stinking long. <laughs> yeah. He can hold they it do down that on purpose. here. That's yeah. right. He can do that. And his is the condenser mic. Have your this best fade in here. So they, they start talking and they're like, we can't hear you. <laughs> so that's right. Yep. All right, so uh, now we have a bonus round question. It's time for a bonus round. All right, what is an action figure mm-hmm. that by all accounts would not be considered a cool figure, but you yep. really like it yep. and why? And I'm going to let you go okay, first in the bonus round. Go this, one. this one came from the estate sale he mentioned earlier. Okay, estate sale. And actually came to you and you gave it to me. I'm a good friend. I think that's a good friend right there. I had to do some research on this one because I've had it for a couple years now. Right. And I never knew what it was called. Really? Yeah. You had never a figure knew. that you didn't know what it was nope. called? Okay. I, just, I can't wait to see I it. I liked it and you'll know why I liked it. I know why. Yeah. I know what this is going to be. I All right. This, this is be. from Masters of the Universe. All right. And it is, as I've learned, Fearless... Oh. Fearless Photog. Fearless what? Fearless Photog. Which is a weird name to me because he's it's a projector. It's a projector. But it's called Fearless Photog. Almost like photography? Yeah. So, I'll, you know, honestly, when I first got it, I thought, oh, I know what this is called. It's called Projector. Because that's how Master's Universe is. Always did. Everything projector. O- o- R. Yeah. You know, but it's not. It's called Fearless Photog. Now, here's the interesting thing. This, from my research, was the winner of a fan create-your-own-character contest. Really? A that's little kid. Did. Really? Like 11, 12 years old, came up with Fearless Photog. I have no idea if he's a good guy or a bad guy. Well, he's a good guy. He's got eight but millimeter film. You know movies. how much I love movies. Yeah, and that's the reason why I wanted the figure. Okay, is because he, he's he's a walking. He has a film projector for a head, and he has uh, uh, film reels for a belt. That's right. But what he does, he actually I can't remember exactly what um, you Master of the Universe fans will probably know right off the bat. He like he like when he 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 projects someone on someone. He like sucks their powers away or something and then they show up on his chest so whatever power he takes their soul or something and and so that you guys i don't know if you can see this here if you can see this here he's got like a cool little lenticular uh sticker right there yeah for those of you guys wondering what that stuff is when you're a kid when you had that little sticker that you could (laughs) but that is that that sends jt running lenticular yep he cannot stand that zip zip oh really the sound sound. yeah okay and i gave abby uh um abby's my daughter JT's my son. I gave her a bookmark that was lenticular. Yeah. So whenever she wants to, she can uh, <laughs> yeah, just run him off. Run him off. Run him now, off. there's something that you still have that I want to find because I didn't tell a research I didn't know. He has a gun mm-hmm. that is a movie projector. I'll find it. And I'll. So if you come across that, I want, I want that. And I didn't notice this. I'll try to look at it. Shoots. It um, retracts. It, oh, it, it focuses. Acts. Yeah. It, it focuses. In and out. Yeah, it's yeah. kind of weird, but that's right. But yeah, I love Fearless Photog because it just it taps into my love of action figures and movies. Because I never would have thought of a figure like this. It is and an I, actual, and I don't know if he's a person or a robot. I mean, he's got muscular you, you like a robot. You no, know, you mean like a person? Yeah, but you can't have yeah, like if your head robot. is a camera. Yeah, I mean, is he like We're something that went wrong? Or yeah, but I like someone wrong with that dude. There's someone wrong with him. But I really like Fearless Photog. He sits proudly in my. My very small but um, loving Master of the Universe. Well, that's right. Collection. Well, yeah. the, the uh, yeah. Well, for and Rob, like I, I mentioned, is actually a bigger movie buff than I am. And one of the sections of our website of uh, GenXVault.com is going to be uh, Rob's picks and uh, Rob's corner and whatever Rob's take, whatever we do. Yeah. Rob's ratings, Rob's ratings, maybe something like that. And we'll, um, come, up we'll come up with something. Yes. Yeah. And. Uh, it's actually Rob's got a whole series and system of movie ratings, so oh, yes. which is really detailed, yes. really detailed. So, and I, I have I have documented I have a list that started in two thousand seven. How many of have everything that I've ever watched really? since two thousand seven? Everything I've watched. See, I need to do that with Ashley because last night she says, "Oh, uh, we, we watched Creed yeah. two last night." And so last night, says, "Oh, 
a trailer came on in the on the Blu-ray. Yes, we're old. And a trailer came on on the Blu-ray, and it said, uh, "Oh, this movie, blah blah blah." She goes, "Oh, we need to watch that." I'm like, "Baby, we have seen yeah. that." She's like, "No, no." I was like, "We saw it in this house." She can't remember what she saw. No, that's right. That's okay. All right. So it is my bonus pick. All right. Okay. So my bonus pick. What I'm gonna do? And this is this is a figure that most people consider lame, but Chris really likes. Yes, that's right. Is I like Lifeline. Now I got a little bit of meta action going on. Are they on both here. Lifeline? They're both Lifeline. This okay. is the original. Notice he's sick. He's not doing so well. Yeah. And and this one right here is uh, he's helping this guy back up. He's got. I got you, man. You, I got you. But so he comes with a um, saline solution. Right? He come. Oh man, he comes with saline. He comes with oxygen. He comes with and this a gun. Is, oh no, two guns <laughs> and, and a knife and a, a tracker or whatever. Well, you just can't save them. So look at well, look you at gotta make room. Well, here's the funny thing that you yeah. say that this is clearly like a, a tranquilizer gun or, or, a, oh, or yeah. some kind of CC. Yeah, it's, it's a hypo gun. Hypo, yeah, yeah, it does that. So it's it's whatever maybe to help the guy out. But yeah. what's interesting about Lifeline, and this is again, we grew up Generation X. There was a lot of things left ambiguous, and one of the things <laughs> was that it talked about a Lifeline's card. Was it you, you remember that movie with uh, with Gar, Andrew Garfield in it that was the uh, Oh the was guy it? who kept going up and Hacksaw Ridge. Hacksaw Ridge. Yes. So Lifeline was kinda like that. He was a pacifist. On mm-hmm. the back of his card, if I'm not mistaken, he was a pacifist. He would not shoot. He now carries a knife and a But gun. no no no. Okay. He came look at this, the original. Right there. A yeah. holster and on the on the <laughs> actual on the thing. He showed him holding forty five. Yeah. So here he is holding like a nineteen eleven. And it's 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 lifeline, literally. Yeah. But what I liked about him, let me go ahead and get a little particular here. Okay. So I'll go with the new one since he's kinda of, for whatever reason he's got a he's got almost looks like a mountain climbing helmet on. Or something yeah. like that. I don't know what that is supposed well, to be. Well you might have to go get someone. Again, you know, thank protected. you, thank yeah. you. He's search and rescue. Yeah. And if you don't believe that, it says rescue right there in his leg. So he until says, he gets to his knee pad, and it just says risky. Risky. He's risky. This one says rescue risky. all the way. Yeah. Didn't have a knee pad though. No. But anyway, so what I liked about this guy was that uh, he, it seemed like he was ready to go. He had the tucked in pants. Yeah. He had the, it was red. It was kind of cool, the red and white combo. I felt like he was a safety kind of guy. So yeah. I picked Lifeline as, you, if you were, if he, most people would consider that in the toy flavor world a peg warmer, probably. Yeah. I'm thinking he would be a peg warmer back in yeah. the day. I'm well, he's like, he's like Ratchet from the Transformers. No one wants the doctor. No, nobody wants the Ratchet. Yeah. yeah. That's right. Nobody wants the doctor. Yeah. A doc probably didn't do well. No. Which is a shame because he was probably one of he was one of GI Joe's only few black action figures, you know, African Americans. So, and here you go, you got you got Lifeline, and uh, he's a peg warmer too. But I'm like, you know what? I yeah. some of my guys might get hurt. Yeah, I might need to bring them back. Yep. So that's there's that. peg warmer. There's that. Peg warmers need love too. The peg warmers need love too. Mm-hmm. That's gonna be a T-shirt. Cause if, if I was an action figure, I'd be a peg warmer. <laughs> so that's why. <laughs> that's why I have a, a, an, an affinity for the peg warmer. <laughs> If you were an action figure, you'd be a peg warmer. Yeah. Oh, I, like I said, I'm 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 approaching fifty. I, I have no um, more illusions about. How, how close are you to fifty now? I am literally half literally halfway between 40, 45 and fifty. So you're forty seven and a half. Okay. Yeah. Well, I had to do math. You made me do math on this podcast. Yeah. Yeah. Holy moly! All right, so halfway to fifty. Halfway to fifty. Yeah. Between forty forty five. I'm forty seven. Okay. I'll be forty eight. In six months. And I'm 45, so we are definitely Gen X as, as much as we can be. All right, so good deal. So Rob got, yes. for the recap that, Rob picked the, it's not Projector, it's... Fearless Photog. I can't believe that's, I can't believe his name is not that's Projector. A, that's, that's the name of, uh, the, the kid must have come up with the name too. They, that, but they, Hasbro's like, hey kid, we'll let you design yeah. this. Well, and his he, name is being Projector. That's yeah. what his name shall be. You know they went up to the executive it's like, what's his name? Fearless Photog. Whatever. Put top. Just, yeah, just let it go. It's, let a, it go. it's a figure. It one. won. We, we got to fulfill our commitment. That kid no won the internet that day. Yeah. That's right. You did good. I like your figure. Whoever, That's right. Whatever kid you are out there. All right. So uh, now, the next segment that we're going to do for you guys, and oh, my pick, sorry. Rob's pick was Fearless Photog. Fearless Photog. And mine was Lifeline. Both of them, well, Fearless Photog would have never been a peg warmer because he never made it to a peg. But yeah. Lifeline would have definitely been a peg warmer. No, he, he, he was, he was the, I think he was the Maddie uh, Collector's Club. Oh. That's how I would think so. That's very possible. So I don't think, not only at the time He Man came out like that, all the collectors, they figured out they're all Gen Xers, 40 year old buying these things. <laughs> yeah. They're, they're, they didn't go to shelves, they went straight to the homes. That's yeah. what Mattel was doing. That's all right. right. So now, is the yes. next segment of our show is called It's Time for the Box Boy Mystery. Now, Rob does not know what this is. What this is, all right? This is cool. I've got. 
a mystery box here. And I'm going to have to give a shout out to my wife, Ashley, who gave me this I box. have those comics. You have the comics. I have, you the, have the box. The comics that are on there, uh -huh. I actually have them. You have these? Yes. That Empire. Uh, let's see. Yeah. If I could pick it, that one's kind of cool. See the Empire uh, right there. So in this box, oh, mystery, this uh, nice firm box of mystery that I have, we have a rule. It's going to be a segment of our show called Box O Mystery. Is that something someone bought you because they knew you like Star Wars? Okay, I will tell you the history behind this box of mystery. Yes. Here's the mystery history. The history of mystery. The history of the mystery. That's right. It is actually for my 40th birthday. Yes. Uh, she gave me this box with letters from a lot of people in my life uh, that yeah. were significant. Even ex-girlfriends because Ashley's cool like that. Wow. I, that's brave, right? Well, that's, been, uh, well, Ashley did that. And so she gave me this wonderful box. She put every all these letters and all this stuff in there from people that were important to me, and it was really cool. So I I just I love this box. I think the artwork is outstanding, and so and also uh, it's nice and you know it's strong yeah. strong box. Yeah. So this is my box of oh, mystery, and we're gonna open it up. It's outstanding because that artwork is by Al Williamson, who's an awesome artist. Star Wars I artist. told you that Rob was a this is the and this is the vintage Marvel um, comic, comic covers, right? right. Yeah, from Not the, the Dark Horse stuff and all that. Yeah. yeah. All right. Yep. So, all right. So, in this box, of Mister, we're going to go ahead and start with the first item that's going to be a little bit more obvious. I shall open the box of mystery. All right. The first thing, first item up for bids, is a spawn raven. Look, now this is different. This is different than the one I had. It's colored differently. It. Thank you. See, Rob noticed that. So, if you can see that, oops. Let's see if I can back this bad boy up. You can see that right there. He's got kind of a cool. Crimson patina going on. Yeah. All right. And the reason why I bought this is because, uh, well, I was Googling mm -hmm. and I made the mistake of Googling after, after the show. But mm -hmm. I thought this figure right here was cool about this guy is that they made a little bit of red in there. They changed it up a little bit and gave his claws a little bit of silver. But I just thought that was so cool. I, I'm, again, I've never read the first Spawn comic. I don't know yeah. anything about Spawn. I've read some Spawn comics, but uh, I didn't read them very long. What was uh, the story here? I have no idea. I don't know who that is. But okay, so let me ask you this. So for I know. Okay, here's here's what I do know about Spawn. Like I said, I bought like the first twelve episodes issues when they came out, mm -hmm. and because uh, I like McFarlane's art, right? Because he'd, yeah. he'd been on Spider Man, and he done Venom. He done Venom, right? Yeah, he created Venom. He co-created Venom. Oh really? Yep, he co-created Venom know that. with David Michelini or something. Aha! I did not know that. Anyway, um, I know very I know very little about Spawn, but I do know Spawn is not just one person. Oh, really? Spawn's like a, he's like an entity from hell or something. I didn't know that. Who's been around. So there's, there's been spawns throughout history. I did not know that. And I, no, I didn't know that. I just I thought it was. And, I, and uh, people who are spawn fans are talking about this guy don't know nothing. And it's true. I don't know nothing. But I know it, it's not the same guy as always spawn and spawn is like. There's been spawns all throughout history. I did. Well, I mean, the, I knew that there was that's like. A, that's about all I know. I knew there was medieval and stuff like that. I knew that. it was something like that. Well, I knew, I knew there was medieval and all that yeah. kind of stuff, but this one, this variation, as we as we like to call them, toy play in the world. Yes. Of course, this is an intentional variation. This yep. is a, a re, you know, re sculpt or whatever. Not re sculpt, but a re uh, relaunch. Um, they uh, he did a little bit of red in there, and uh, I'm gonna end up opening that. And uh, actually, I had it you, for those of you hardcore toy collectors, and this was folded out the gate. Sorry about that. Just the way it is. I'm gonna open that up, and that's gonna be a thing that I put up somewhere else. So. That's that a is, maddening packaging too. It's the what? That's a maddening packaging. Oh, the blister packaging. Yeah. Well, you know what? You know what you use to 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 fix this packaging, right? Well, the next item in the mystery box, which does not count, <laughs> but you always know. always just took a knife yeah. and just went around. Well, you know. Okay, so let's talk one thing, Gen X here. Yes. Listen, Gen X who's out here and younger millennials and and Gen Y and all that stuff. There are some things in life you cannot skip on, cannot skimp on, and one of those things is a good pair of scissors. True. I mean, and the older you get, do you find yourself buying nicer tools? Oh yeah. Oh god, I love tools now. I, yeah. I don't. I was like, I remember forget what happened to me. Why am I shopping for tools? Yeah. And there was no more worse torture as a kid than having to go to the hardware store. Uh, that's right. When you yeah. had to go with, and especially mm -hmm. your dad, God, he'd go all the time. Oh yeah. No, it was so, my mom that was worst. Really? Yeah. What did she want in the hardware store? Oh, she because she was always doing projects like home projects. Oh, like and crafts stuff. and stuff. Or do just, you remember? Um, well, let's see, you were you lived in Claxton. Um, there used to be a place called um, West. Yes. yes. Oh, God, it was my mom's favorite oh. place. That was my mom's favorite place. And she was going to hang the place. Because oh. it, it wasn't just a quick in and out. It no, was, no. Like, two well, hours it, was, it was like 8,000 square feet. Yep. My God, yep. it was massive. No, no, it wasn't. 
It was at least two hundred thousand square feet. It was, big. was massive. It was it was yeah. awful. No, no, it was it was huge. All right, so yeah, my solution is just cut that bad boy up. Yeah. So, no, sir, it, like I said, next time just get one of your super sharp knives, puncture, and just go. Just around. go around. Yeah. All right. Well, Super easy. Well, some of the folks that might be watching this go. No. And you and you can save your artwork on the back. I don't care about the artwork. I'm not. A, I mean, it's pretty and all that. It just yeah. tells me what to buy next. Exactly. And that guy's pretty smart. What are those numbers on the side? Uh, maybe how many points you get. That was 2013. I have no idea what that is. That's weird. Reborn series. Three. Three. Uh-huh. I have no idea. Series three. Series thirteen. Series twenty. Series twenty one. I don't know. Huh. That's weird. I, don't know. I can't keep up. If you if you look at the history of McFarland Toys Online, it is vast, and it is. I don't remember ninety percent of the stuff they do. They, you know, McFarland does a lot of sports stuff like NFL and yeah. hockey and NHL. Yeah, and, and I just fan. yeah NBA, but I just can't keep up with that. So this is my figure of the day. So Spawn Reborn is just him reissuing older figures and different I, I, paint jobs. I guess so. That's what I'm gonna. Uh, we'll have to ask our comic friend Chris Brenneman. You know, Chris. You ever Chris? Something that name sounds familiar. Yeah, yeah, good friends with Jake. So yeah. we'll reach out to you, Chris, for a future interview about what it's like owning a comic book store. He owns a comic book store now. Does really? He does. It's not here. And no, no, in a teeny tiny little town. I don't know where it is. Huh. But it, but he does. He owns a comic book store. So that's gonna be one of our future interviews. I think it'd be yeah. fun. That'd be cool. Yeah, interview him. So that's uh, Spawn Reborn, whichever one this is. Uh, it's pretty sweet. I like it. I like it a lot. So all right. So now the next item up for bids. I did something interesting. It's something I rarely ever do. This is for the collectors out there. I'm gonna go ahead and put the box O mystery down because these we gotta see at the same time. All right. So when it's my turn, I have to buy stuff. You don't have to buy stuff. No, okay. you don't have to buy stuff. But I, I just thought I would share. In this box, excuse me, in this package I got it was $22.99. This was $48.99. This is supposedly the exact same sculpt, head sculpt. But as you can see, I got them on eBay and they came from they came from China. The little I like packets. And you, well, you don't know exactly what they are yet, but. I'm, don't spoil it for the listeners that may not. So this this figure, what's really cool about this is, uh, you know, I, I've, I've kind of gotten this thing where I me kit bash a little bit and start making my own little figures. Yeah, yeah. you do know what this is. I know what it is. We've talked about this. Yeah. So let's go ahead, and what I'm going to do for my viewers out there, I'm going to open the $22.99 one. Okay. And then the $28.99 one, and we're going to find out if the head sculpt in this one looks as good as that one. And then we'll know for you buyers out there, What's the safe way to go? First, the twenty-two ninety-nine. All right, all right. So for those at home watching, and maybe you, you cannot see as well. All right, this is the uh, what is it? The it's supposed to be the eleven Logan head sculpt. The uh, wow, that looks great. I think. There's, this you is, look at this it. is old man Logan from Logan. Old man Logan from uh, the movie Logan. It's supposed to be Hugh Jackman from Logan. Doesn't have a lot of gray. I'm about to say, I thought he had more gray hair. He doesn't have a lot of gray, but that's There's supposed a to be little, him. You can tell they tried a little bit. Okay. But not much. It's a good look, though. Yeah, it's a good look. It's a good figure. Good teeth. Yeah, well, let me see the teeth, because that's one, that's one of the things I was curious teeth about. Teeth look good. Yeah, the teeth look good. And actually, it's a different sculpt. You can see how they do the teeth yeah. in the back. Uh-huh. So for those of you the Hot Toys fans out there, you can see the white is actually for the teeth in the mouth. So that actually be separated from the, uh, and that's a lot of engineering that goes into that. Yeah. You know, for those of you who've seen my videos, you know that I have a company, we build guitars and amps, and I respect any kind of engineering that goes into this. So that's pretty good looking. So that is on my left. That is the twenty-two dollar and ninety-nine figure. Now, China doesn't charge tax. Well, I'm sure they did. I'm sure I paid a little bit more by the time I get it. I don't know about tax, but it was the, it was the, imp, the import. They charge shipping. A little bit. It wasn't much. No, I mean you can get this stuff for like next to nothing. Yeah. And and actually that was free shipping. Hmm. I think my, my landing cost was like twenty three, twenty four dollars. Wow. It was crazy. You know, crazy. That's not bad. Not bad at all. No, I mean, but I'm gonna be upset if this forty eight dollar and ninety nine cent figure mm-hmm. ends up being the same dang sculpt. You know. Uh, now if they've detailed more of the paint. It can't be a whole lot better. I mean, that's pretty daggum good. But I had to test. And I figured what better way than to test with you viewers about what we do. It's so, always good to get ahead in life. <laughs> that's right. And you can see they've... Uh, okay, let's see. Well, okay, they packaged it better, but is it $20 worth of packaging? Maybe the $20 mm-hmm. worth of packaging. If that's the case, then I'm a little worried. All right, let's see. Opening this up. Opening this up. Opening this up. Oh, they've, they've got a little card in here. Oh, there's that. It's called Flacker. Wow, this thing is wrapped to the nine. 
Oh, and it says... This is two different companies? Yeah, this is the... Uh, oh, this is... Look, this is one six kit, which I've actually purchased from them before. But this was actually purchased... Yeah, this is actually from one six kit. But it was actually purchased on eBay, not right from their website. And I've actually okay. purchased from one six kit before. On eBay? On e well, no, I purchased straight from their website. Okay. But now this is from eBay. So but they're a China-based company. They are a Chinese-based company. Yeah, that's where I got my Fiken body that I'm going to put this, this guy on. And he said Fiken, not... Uh... Fi it, I think that's how you say it. I've heard some people say Fison. But for those of you Hot Toys collectors out there, the one six scale, the, the yeah. 12 inch, then that's what that is. All right, so let's open this bad boy up and see... It's really hard to tell. I mean, anything that's extra cost is in the um, packaging. Well, if anything, they've gone through a lot of trouble. If anything, they've uh, made it harder. So, while I while I appreciate the protection, all right. Wow, holy moly! Yeah, because they're coming just like here. <laughs> okay. Hmm. Oh, wait. Oh, okay. It did come with a pencil. Why? It, it didn't. Because didn't he put a pencil in his ear in the, for when he's a limo driver? That came with a pencil. You can't see that. That's a teeny tiny That's little a teeny pencil. Tiny pencil. A one six scale. I don't pencil. know. I've seen Logan twice, but I, I can't recall if there was a pencil. He was using the pencil to keep tabs up with stuff for Charles, right? Wasn't he doing that? Maybe. Like I, I don't know. Okay, so that is a weird accessory. That is a. <laughs> the Logan, the Wolverine comes with a pencil. Yeah. Wolverine's like, hey man. <laughs> well, you know, it's kind of funny. I didn't almost catch it when it was sitting there by it. Yeah. But I thought I saw it in the thing. I'm like, wait a minute. Yeah. It, it does. And that's a little cool little number two pencil. That's, if I could see, I'd, I'd appreciate that pencil. Yeah. yeah. You know, that's amazing. That's, that's okay, so different. this is the $48.99. Uh, do you notice off the top of your head any real differences, Rob? Like, I mean, the teeth are a little more open on this, maybe. There's a difference in the skin tone. There's a slight. This one's a little darker. The forty-eight ninety-nine yeah. is a little darker. Uh, the hair looks exactly the it same. It does. They're very similar. We can honestly say that this is the same sculpt. I would think so. I don't yeah. see really don't see any difference. variations. The paint job is a little different. The paint job is a little different. In He's fact, the, the $20 one looks more like Old Man Logan. I do. I will have to agree with Rob on that. And so, that one, it's, it's got the tinges of white in the hair. Right. Where I don't really see much of any in the... Um, there is a slight, for those of you looking, there is a slight, if you can see that, um, uh, just neck joint inside of that. There's a slight little neck joint there. Mm -hmm. um, see that? The Hot yep. Toys adapter or whatever it is? Yep. There's a slight little neck joint. And I can't imagine that being a big difference, to be honest with you. No. Um... Okay, so again, the one here is a twenty twenty two dollars, yeah, twenty two $23. and this one is a forty eight ninety nine. So for those, if I was going to use one, I would use the twenty two ninety nine. Yep, there you go. Now I yeah. think I do like the teeth just a little bit better because you can see the separation. Yeah, but honestly, I could pop those right out and pop them right into here. Yep. So that's no big deal. So for the hot toys collectors out there that are looking to kit bash and make your own Logan. If you find the Hot Toys figure for $22.99, go ahead and get that one. Uh, you know why this one sold for $48.99? Uh, the packaging. It actually, it, well, it wasn't the packaging. And the pencil. It wasn't the pen <laughs> if it was the pencil, that the pencil's pencil, $20. Bucks. They wouldn't, the pencil's $20. You know what it was? They had the best photo when you first saw it on, uh, hot, on eBay. Yeah. And they had so many good photos of it they could get away with it. Yeah. It's marketing, folks. It's marketing. Yeah. So, 100% marketing. Let's see. Put my refuse away. All right. Oh, yeah. See if it got scars and everything. Like yeah, it's got scars in his, where he kind of had in the, in the yeah, movie. Yeah, it, it is the exact same mold. Exact same sculpt. The teeth are different. I, I, yep. I got you that. I the do teeth are better on the mold. That's true. It's a little open, but it's if we but if you had you not seen that, it's not yeah. like you'd break it apart. No. Nope. Did Hot Toys make a Logan figure? Did they make a what? Did they make a Logan figure? I don't think they did. They made... Several more about that. I, yeah, I am too. Well, there's other guys out there. This is, um, I mean, good old oh, they Lennon. made the X Men Origins Wolverine figure. Yeah. They make the Logan figure. Right. This one's 11. What's the name of that company? The 11. 11 Studios. Mm -hmm. 11 Studios. I think this is the original sculpt by 11 Studios, which is, uh, another, you know, um, uh, I don't know if they're based out of Hong Kong like, like Hot Toys is. Yeah. But they, uh, 
you know, but they, they make uh, really high end. I mean, the exact quality that I would say the hot toys is. This is the exact quality. Yeah. I, I don't. I can't say you could argue either way with the. Yeah, you know, I would look that. at that. I think it was a hot toys from hot toys. Either way, either way. All right. So now then, that is my bag uh, box of mystery. Okay. Box of mystery this week. All right. To wrap things up, we're gonna go ahead and do a. Well, actually, that's no, not like the final thing. Don't lose the pencil. Oh yeah, I won't lose the pencil. I'm sorry. I mean, Okay. On my, uh, I don't know if that, yeah, he doesn't have any ear room to stick that in. I don't know it's, what. It's, that's the most bizarre accessory I've ever seen. Well, you know, it, he's, Logan needs to take yeah. notes, all right? Last movie, blah, blah, blah. We're charging him $20 more. We need to give him something extra. How about a little pencil? A pencil. That's <laughs> <laughs> okay. So that was my box of mystery for this week. Okay. All right. Now, the next segment of our show is called Action Figure Assault. Action Figure Assault. <laughs> I think you've actually brought a physical uh, a representation of an action yes. figure. I didn't find my original one from the 80s, so I'm just going to have to wing mine. Um, you go ahead and go first. Okay. I am a big... Um, the, the true hero of A New Hope, I think everyone will agree, is R5-D4. <laughs> it's r 5 okay. So. Finally, um, in 1995, Power of the Force line, uh, they put out an R5-D4 figure. And they thought to themselves, we need something extra to commemorate this important character from the movies. So they thought, what could we do to make this figure special? And so what they came up with is almost making him into a transformer type character where you can split him open and he has a rocket firing cannon inside of him. And are those supposed to be lasers for him or is that like a cannon I, I don't, now? I don't know. I don't know. If, I, 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 it's, hard, it's hard to say. Because we didn't see this in the movie. I'm assuming you can kind of do it like that. There you go. So that you can then shoot. And shoot I am cannon. going to shoot. All right, wait, wait, wait. wait. Let's go ahead Let's and see. take... Let's go ahead and take... Yes, give me a target. All right. You know what? He would be against the Empire, right? And here's here's what here's what it looks like when you open up rocket firing R5-D4. Right, I don't, get, don't him, know get him on film. Let's get okay. your guy on film. So right, we got it. I right. think we're... You there? Might I'll, be in line. I don't I'll know. I'll block the shot. Okay. Go here we it. go. Oh! Perfect. Yes. Yes, that nail. Best it. toy ever. That's right. Right so, there. So they had... Guaranteed to choke five-year-olds... <laughs> When they shoot or eat each other and everything else. But there is know, that's there is R five D four and then you just you just reload him. And you fire away. And well, I say you do. You gotta well, one of the things. You, you can do that just right in the nineties. Yeah. yeah. And then you just fold him back up. And he's good to go. And then he, he's ready to go until he pops a bad motivator again. And, the, and, and I think that's what happened. When he popped his motivator, his rocket accidentally fired. <laughs> Inside his helmet. Inside his helmet. <laughs> blew his motivator out. <laughs> and it blew his motivator out. Very powerful rocket. Yeah. And, yeah and, uh, and so that's play. that's why uh, R2 got picked instead of R5. But um, <laughs> He was getting happy and he yeah. short circuited his rocket. I've always had an affinity for R5-D4 because if I was an astromech droid, I would be R5-D4, not R2. So I um, like R5 a lot. And I, that's just... And, and what's weird is in the Power of the Force line, they did no other figure of R5-D4. Like that. No, no other figure with any kind of strange hidden accessory right to oh but his yeah but for some reason they put a rocket inside of r5d4 that you could shoot that was well okay so let's talk about this what happened though in that time frame was you had because of the introduction of of, of spawn and mcfarland toys and things like that uh star wars started bulking up that's when you got this yep. musculature yep. luke skywalker oh, yeah the original 95 line they made them Huge. Huge. And we thought they were great because right. they looked so the because the sculpting was so much better than the eight, or so much more um, detailed. detailed. Yeah, detailed than, than the original. So I think what they did was okay. We all right. You, you, you see the the yeah. you know the Hasbro meeting. All right, guys, listen. We got the toys here. Yeah. We got to bulk up this robot somehow. Yeah. You know, and then they they made him fire a rocket. And then I think the, the greatest one in that original bulked up line from '95 was um, Lando. Cause right. Lando, he wears the billowy, blousy shirt, right? But he's got a ripped. six pack. Ripped. It shows the six pack. He's there ripped. in his billowy shirt. He's ripped. You know, he is jacked. Yep. 
No joke. Yeah, and the funny thing is, is that the uh, Childish Gambino is not the guy that played the young. Yeah, Don, uh, uh, Donald Glover. Uh, yeah, Donald Glover. Donald Glover. Donald Glover. Is it Donald Glover? Donald it Glover. It's Glover. Well, Glover. Because he always has to tell people that he's not. Donald, um, not Corey Glover. No, it's not Corey Glover. He has to tell no, 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 no. It's not Corey Glover. Who does he have to tell people he's not? It, um, the actor from. Uh, Lethal Weapon? Danny Glover. Danny Glover. Yes, still people he's not Danny Glover's son. Okay. All the time. Oh, okay, because I, yeah. I got to know if he wants. Because like, in interviews, one of the first things he's like, I'm not Danny Glover's son. son. Okay. So but now Corey Glover is the lead singer of uh, of Living Color. Maybe. I think so. We're going to research that and then I'll broadcast a graphic right here. Yeah. I think. I know Danny Glover. Danny Glover's awesome. I think that Corey Glover, the lead singer of Living Color, you remember Cult of Personality and Glamour oh, Boys and all that? Yeah. I think he's Danny Glover's son. That was the name of the group? Living Color. Yeah. Yeah, way before the... Had anything to do with the TV show? Nothing to do with the TV show. Okay. Nothing to do with the TV show. But okay. they did wear, you know, like, uh, spandex and... They called the personality. They did. Cult of personality. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah they did cult of personality. I like cult of so, personality. Yeah, that's a good song. That's yeah. a good song. Good song. All right, so my pick... Okay, so R5-D4. R5-D4 from the 95 Power of the Force. The rocket line. launching yeah. uh, Astro Mech. Yeah. That's right. So that's Rob's pick. My pick for ridiculous action figures that have no... Uh, we're just gonna cut it up. Oh, speaking of which, and I came up with the term "cut up" because I was worried. I thought you wanted me to destroy. The <laughs> no, 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 no. No, but I came up with a uh, the cut up term, the term "cut up" because that was actually a Sixteen Candles reference, where uh, where they were talking about uh, Jake Ryan's girlfriend. Yeah. And like, yeah, you can't even cut her up. And I didn't know that was a thing that that girls even did. Yeah. So what we're doing is we're being bad middle school girls cutting up this action figure. That's okay. what we're doing. We're just talking smack about it. Got it. All right. So mine, I'm gonna have to show a graphic up here. Is my pick for this this uh, episode is Big Boa from GI Joe, and I think Big Boa came from either the '86 or '87. I want to say it was the '87 line of GI Joe. Big Boa was so, you want to research that while I'm talking yeah, about? Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, research that while I'm talking about. So Big Boa was, in my opinion, when kind of when GI Joe kind of started jumping the shark, because uh, if if we can use a term like that, because honestly, Big Boa was a according to the blister card. He was a boxing instructor that, A, I don't know the reason why that's funny because he wore a helmet. He wore a metal helmet with spikes on it. And he had boxing gloves. And then he wore a, you know, the, the X-Brace bandolier that yeah. had spikes. Look at him, how bad that is. He's a boxing instructor yeah. and he has a metal helmet. Are you going to get a little flip? You might can show the camera. Yeah, you can show the camera there. Yeah, I think we can show that. Here we go. Rob's. Big boy. Well, oh, it's it's blinking some sort of weird way. It's probably a frame rate issue. Yeah. Let's see if this one is on there. So this one sees it. Big boy, right here. This guy is ridiculous. Um, as you can see, he's got spikes all over him. Yeah. He's got and a the cobra emblem on his gloves. And and he's got the spikes on his helmet. If I and he the says whatever last. And he's just saying he's a trainer. So if I'm having to hit this guy, why am I even going to think about hitting him in the head? Yeah. Where am I going to hit him? He's got his body spiked off. We need yeah. to hit him in the elbow. I mean, you can't hit yeah. him anywhere else. He's there's, got all, a, there's all kind of wrong things. Everything's wrong about here. that figure. He looks like, here's what it looks like. It looks like Hasbro had a meeting. But I kind of want him now. What did he say? You yeah. know why I wanted that figure in the 80s? I love well, the boxing gloves. That's why I wanted the figure. <laughs> that's why I wanted the figure. I wanted the figure in the boxing gloves. So I was yeah. like, okay, here's, here's, here's 12 or 13 year old Chris rationalize this. Hmm. I like Rocky. This one's got, <laughs> this one's got boxing gloves. Yeah. I don't. I don't have a figure with boxing gloves. Maybe I'll get that figure. Gloves. That's right. So I ended up getting Big Boa. So and and you know and I think I, and here's what I did. I kit bashed Big Boa. I took his helmet off because it's stupid on him, and I put it on the uh, the one of the pilot figures. I think the pilot for the Night Raven. I think I finally put Big Boa's helmet on the Night Raven, which was still stupid because it gives you like a narrow field of vision. It's just the dumbest yeah. thing ever. So, Dude, but that okay. but Big Boa. If I have to cut up, okay. Here's everything wrong with that figure. He's a boxing instructor with spikes all over his body. How are you going to hit him? You're not going to hit him. And maybe that's the intention, right? He's got a helmet with a narrow field of view. He's got... Uh, He's expensive. Really? Here's a big boa from 2013. It's got four bids. It's already up to $107. Um, see? See? There's no, I'm going to cut that figure up. Um, there's, no, there's no sense in that. Here's another one. Buy now for $140. Oh, no. He did come with a, a punching bag. I forgot best about offer. And it said G.I. Joe, I think, on it. <laughs> Didn't it say G.I. Joe? It had two X's. Oh, my God, it does. Didn't it say G.I. Joe? Yeah, and that's what it came with in the, in the, set, in the 80s, too. So. No, okay, now here's, this, isn't, this isn't so bad. What's that? Um, here's a vintage 87 Big Boa out of the box 
for 30 bucks, buy it now. Okay, so now Rob is in his, oh, I kind of like this one. No, I don't like it that much. <laughs> I you can, I won't fight you can always him. shop for Big Boa. Yeah. Well, no, you can't fight me for it. I'm wearing spikes on my head, and I got yeah. these boxing gloves. Exactly. What are you going to do? But I, but I ended up using Big Boa's boxing gloves on some other character. I don't know why I gave oh, that character. Here's one for $6 without the gloves. What's the point? There's no point. If you can't get his gloves, there's yeah. absolutely no point in that, owning that figure. Looks like somebody did it. Yeah. Now here's a, here's one. You could. There's a, The bid's open. Right now, it's only 99 cents. But it's got seven days. So bid. Yeah, yeah that thing's going to go up to you know, $300 or yeah. something like that. Oh, God. So, yeah. So, your takeaway in this segment was the missile launching. Missile launching R5-D4. R5-D4. And mine is the infamous Cobra boxing trainer, Big Boa, who is ridiculous. Yes. So, two horrible figures, which we've both owned. Yeah. Well, no. Well, independently. Independently. He's yeah. owned. Yeah. I, I, I owned, Big Boa. I used to own Big Boa. I don't, I don't know where he is or if I still own him, but I used to own Big Boa. And, uh, and in Hasbro's defense, the, the very last R5 they made is pretty awesome. So The last R5 they the, made? The last, the, yes. The newest yes. R5 they made is a really good figure. That's right. Yeah, it was a really good figure. So that, that was a killer figure. I like it too. All right. So now, our final segment of the day. We, we appreciate you guys watching. Oh, a little shout out here. If you like the show and you want to support the show, yes. uh, we have some mugs. It says Gen X Vault with Cam and JRC. Uh, our... That's right. Yeah. You go by your middle name. You go by your middle name. Because you're, you're junior. Okay. No. Yeah. You're not? Mm. So your dad's middle name's not Robert? Nope. Okay. Just John. Can. Okay. Okay. So the, uh, we have some mugs. If you want to see some stuff and you like what you're, what you're seeing on the show, uh, we're going to do this for fun. We're just good friends. We're having a good time. And so we're going to keep doing it for fun. Uh, but it does help a little bit because I did pay for the domain name and the hosting and all that kind of stuff. So it helps a little bit. So if you want to support the show, we have the mug. And you get a really good mug. You get a really good mug. This is good stuff. It's a polar camel. Yeah, polar camel. Fourteen ninety nine. Yeah, that's right. You could also get you a folder. You could replace that trapper keeper with the Gen X vault. You could never replace a trapper keeper. Okay, I'll admit that. Yeah, I'll admit that. yeah this has only got one pad and just one yeah. sleeve. That is awesome though. You didn't. Yes. I didn't know you made that. Yeah, I, know. I made it last today. I like that. I made it. Thank you. I like that a lot. I see one in your future with your name. I would hope so. And on the back. Considering my name's on the show. Well, that's right. That's right. Maybe <laughs> maybe a proof of purchase or Doctor Doom on the back. Okay. Yeah, that's right. I, I knew it was like proof of purchase. All right. So the last little segment of the show is going to be. Ask the Magic Eight Ball. All right. Each one of us have a question that we're going to ask the Eight Ball, as we did when we were kids. Uh, if you were like my brother and sister, I grew up uh, with an older brother and sister. They would ask it demented questions. Ooh. Like they would. They'd be like, "Is Chris gonna die in a car wreck?" Really, your sister would? Yeah, my brother and sister yeah. would. Is Chris gonna die in a car wreck? And flip it over. The answer points to yes. I'm like, shut up. I see. I see your brother did. I'm oh, yeah. your sister was out. Yeah. Well, well, I mean, you know, Melissa had a mean streak when she was younger. So, oh, yeah. But she's chilled out since. That's good. <laughs> no. Uh, but my brother uh, definitely. Uh, oh God. Oh I, yeah. I can imagine that. And I don't remember owning one. But I'm surprised I he didn't make you eat that ball. You mean yeah. the stuff inside of it? Or any part of it. Actually. Oh, okay. I got, I got a side story about Ask the Eight Ball. The, the, talking about, uh, you were talking about some of the stories of Star, the expanded universe before Disney yeah. bought it. Uh, there was a writer that wrote a story called, uh, I can't remember the name of it, but the, there was an orb they called the Great God Quay. And when okay. you ask the orb the question, it came up to all 20 answers inside of Magic Eight Ball. And it was funny. It was the answer points to yes, outlook not so good, right. whatever the, whatever right. it was. And the funny thing about that, I called that author in college, and I <laughs> asked, I, I looked him up. I don't know how I found it, but I looked him up, and I called the author. And the first thing I said was, "How did you find out all the answers in a magic eight ball?" And he said that this thing was the hardest thing to break into in the really? world. Yeah, he said there are twenty. Is it? It's a. It's a. Yes, it's a twenty-sided die. Twenty-sided. Like dragon. It is. It is. It's twenty-sided. Uh, okay, I know that. Uh, isn't it ten dot ten-sided called a dodecahedron? Something like that. What's a twenty-sided called? If you're out there, oh you God. automatically know the answer to this question. You're definitely nerdier than Rob and I. So yeah. congratulations. Congratulations. What? All right. Yeah. You're gonna look that up. We're gonna look yeah. that up. Real for the listeners out there. We're gonna go ahead and look it up. Sided. There it is. Polygon. Polygon called. It is called. I never thought about a polygon. An icos- icos- icosagon. 
I C O S A G O N. Icos or Icosagon or Icosagon. Icosagon. So inside the magic eight ball is two things: an Icosagon and magic. Okay. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and ask the magic eight ball. Are you ready? Yes. Here's my question. I get to ask the question first. Okay. Because I wrote it down. That's fine. I can class prepare. I'm good for that. I don't need to borrow a pencil. I got my little bitty teeny pencil over there. There you go. Okay. All right. Final second. Here's Your my. Please. Here, right. here is my. I heard that. Here is my question. Okay. Will Hasbro uh -oh. ever release a follow-up figure of Serpentor worthy to be the successor of the 1986 Amazing Original? Can I answer that? Whoa, 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 whoa. Yeah. First, you know the one they released was horrible. The one they did yeah. after that was horrible. But will they ever release one that's worthy? Here Everything about Serpentor. Here we go. Here we go. Oh, what is it? You may rely on it. Uh, I may rely on this. Okay. I can rely on this. Well, go ahead and I'm place your order now. I, I'm going to Just go ahead and send Hasbro 20 bucks. You hear that, Hasbro? The, 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 uh, well, you know now they do all the big things that us older people are buying, like the Java sale bars that I got back there. You can see the sales. I, that was a mistake. I didn't think they'd make it. And so I'll just pick that fun one. When did they last make a Serpentor figure? They did one in the 25th or 30th anniversary or whatever, and it was horrible. His, his, none of his armor had the scales on it. Right. So it was completely a waste. It was like they put him almost like in a lycra bodysuit. It was horrible. So Hasbro, if you're listening, that Serpentor you came out with a few years ago was garbage. It was hot garbage. So you should be ashamed of yourself for calling that the Emperor of Cobra. You need to make a successor, and Magic 8 Ball says you will. And I can rely on that. All right, Rob. Uh, so I have okay. to ask it a geek question or just you can, a... It's a, it's a show-related question. Again, show this is our method. first format. We're tightening things up here. Okay. And this is a show-related question of today's theme. And since okay. today's theme is action figures... Okay. You still think you should write this down? Jim. Well, I, I wasn't. I wasn't exactly one hundred percent sure what you wanted because you you sprung this on me late in the game. I did, but that's what keeps like it today. fresh. <laughs> that keeps it fresh. Kind of thing. You need I a little was pencil. Doing, I was yeah, doing I other things. A little pencil and, right there. Like, oh yeah. By the way, we're doing this. Okay. If you could ask any okay. question in toy related fandom of any figure right. that you wanted or anything that you that you want to do, just okay. ask a question. All right. Um. This is hard. That's why I wrote mine down. I know. You I, see, but I, I texted it to you. I know. I, I was busy. Like text. I was taking care of Melinda's mother. Which is what we'll talk about later. Um, let's see. Oh, you told me I can't do that. Um, hmm. This, by the way, why are you okay. thinking? Will, the table uh, will Chris ever get a chance again at a vintage replica? Uh, Boba Fett with firing back a uh, rocket. Ooh. Because I have one and he doesn't. Ooh. <laughs> because he couldn't take the time to cut out the points I and send it know. in. To, I didn't know. And send it in. To, I know. Um, I know. I know. I hate that too. I hate that. Very doubtful. Oh, that's probably true. Sorry, man. That is probably true. You can come look at mine whenever you I will come team. and look at your. Yeah. And you got it mounted completely on the wall. Yeah, yeah. It's, still, it's still in package. That's right. right. It's on the wall. Well. That concludes today's episode. First episode. First episode ever. Did you have fun? A collector's item classic. Yeah, I did. A lot more fun than I thought it would. Really? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, I thought it'd be good, but I, I think it, it, it went a lot more. It really feels, it really felt more like us just talking than I thought it would. And so, I, was, I was worried I would be more um, uh, wooden. Now, of course, they may, they may well, disagree. I have to, I have to and, tell uh, you. Well, but, um, well, I thought it would. I, it, it flowed more. It, it really felt like, like we just normally talk. This is how we talk. This yeah. is how we talk, by the way. Yeah. This is not. We don't. Yeah. We, we we're just, not, we're we're not just, putting on airs. This is the script. There is. Yeah. It's literally just notes. It's just yeah. notes. There's. There's no. No. I. I we have no teleprompter. We have no. You no. know. Idea. But I will say this. My brother said one time because I didn't know what you. I didn't know what you know how you're going to go in that rabbit hole either. But my brother said one time. He says Chris. You're a shameless self-promoter, but you share the stage well. So that's, what, <laughs> that's what he told me one time. So thanks for the backhanded compliment there, Mark. Yeah. And well, let's see, is Mark going to get Mark, diarrhea? Mark once, okay. Mark once described you to me as uh, a pretty good guitar player and a fair singer. <laughs> that's it. That's, like, that's a brother compliment right <laughs> that there. Is, that is a brother compliment. I'll take it. I'll take it. But just a record, I, th I think you're good at it. Well, I appreciate it. Yeah. Thank you. Um, so... 
the, but it, well, yeah, it's but that's what I wanted. You know, that's what we wanted to be. We wanted this show to be just fun back and forth. Yeah, uh, probably have a little bit of technical difficulties in this with Rob slapping his table like the Swedish said. Well, if I was told not to slap the table, I, you know, I, I forgot. Well, well, you know, this well, was oh, you just made it turn red. I and you did too. I know. We were clipping. That's we're doing weird. a little bit of audio clipping here. I should. Well, I need to back the game down. That's the problem. Right. Well, I had Ashley and Kim in here the other day, yeah. and they weren't talking nearly as loud as we are. So we're gonna have to do that. And I'm gonna get a different mic. You know, I don't like that mic. It looks cool. It looks vintage and cool, and that's the only reason I chose it. Yes. We need a new mic, so buy mugs. Yes, we would like to get that sweet blue mic that uh, the folks on Good Mythical Morning have. So if you buy that mic, is yeah, I, I got a, I got a feeling people are looking at the background and going, they have all this. I'm not buying them anything. That might happen. Yes. But if you buy, hold on a second, a hundred. This is useful. You could use this. You could use this mug, even if you don't like us. I'm going to buy one. Well, I'm, you know, I, I think I can hook you up for the time, okay. but we'll see. I but like if you it. buy a hundred, or if someone out there buys a hundred mugs, we'll have that mug by next now, episode. You know what happen when I get one? I'll use it once, and then uh, it's the next thing I know, I no, there'll be a, a permanent lipstick stain right here <laughs> because my wife will have taken it. Okay. And I'll never see that lipstick stain again because this top will disappear. How does she get? That's hard to get. And off. then there'll be a permanent lipstick stain here on it's the a, rim. There's a slidey slide thing on So, that. yeah. Well, okay. Okay. This she is takes a, every, every time I get a mug. She, she or Abby takes it. Okay. This is a super duper toy collector question that yeah. I just thought of on the on the on the cuff. I'm gonna ask you. Fly. Ready? Yes. What does that remind you of? The peg off of the. No, that's right. Um, you know what that's figure. called. You, you know what that's called? Time. I told you that because when we made our guitar strings, I, I had to. They asked me what it was. They said, "Do you want the round holder or do you want the sombrero style?" Sombrero, sombrero really? style. So that's called in the industry when you see the toy packaging and uh, no, I don't have one of me right here. But when you see it, it's shaped like a little hat. That's the sombrero style. For all you collectors out there, thank you so much for watching this yep. episode. We enjoyed it. We did enjoy it. Uh, we certainly appreciate you guys being with us. And if you made it to the very end, it's probably over an hour. I'm yeah. thinking. Yeah. I'm thinking. But we had a good time. So for the Gen X Vault, I'm Chris Mitchell. Rob Kennedy. Thank you guys and stay safe. Take care. Bye.